Okay, so good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to uh, this session. So uh, I think we have now the document uh, in which which you are invited to open, and uh, you can register on page one and put your name there, please. And then on page two, we will have questions. So I suggest it will be probably not very efficient if I will be speaking and then uh, you will be only listening. So I suggest that if you have any questions, you can uh, either type them in uh, this document while I will be speaking and then I will try to answer some of them in immediately or I will see that some of them may be better left to by the end of this session okay so if uh, everyone uh, sees some people are still typing so i will give you a couple of more minutes to type your names there Right. Okay. So now uh, I will put here second uh, set of questions. So notes from the presentation. Now you can see questions from uh, my second slide. So first of all, I will introduce the abbreviation called CRIS. So CRIS is a current research information system. And then most likely if you work at university, you heard names of one of popular CRIS systems. For example, Pure, ePrints, Elements, which is also called sometimes Simplectic, Converis, Iris, Work Tribe, or RIS, the Datum. And then probably your university uses something else, in which case we will be interested if you will type what your university is using. So could you please quickly put plus or minus uh, opposite to uh, this questions uh, here in the document. So one, two, uh, I will edit it later, three, four, five, and then six. So just plus or minus will be very much appreciated. Mm -hmm. Right, so we have, I think, 12 participants in this session. Mm -hmm.
All right. Uh, mm -hmm. Not any mm -hmm. longer. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thank you very much, everyone. So what we can see here, then uh, more than the half of you are using these systems. Uh, probably three quarters use it to record publications. Less uh, of you use it to record software. Uh, almost everybody has an ORCID profile, which includes papers and includes software uh, less uh, often. Okay, uh, wonderful. Thank you very much. So, uh, where we will go from now? So, first of all, a little bit of my background. So, I am lecturing at the University of St. Andrews in computer science, but by background, I'm a mathematician and I came uh, here developing mathematical software. And this mathematical software also included uh, peer reviewed packages, which are like user contributed plugins for this system. And then, of course, I included them into my CVs and so on, but uh, they are not officially like recognized at the same level as papers. But then uh, I was cleaning up uh, my profile in Pura, which is the Chris, which we are using here in St. Andrews. And then I thought that why not to add there all my packages because it's actually a lot, a lot of work to develop and maintain them. And that led me to some ideas with which I came last year to uh, collaborations uh, workshop 2019. And uh, together with uh, Luis and Paddy who are here, we worked on a project which was called Code for uh, Ref. So we decided to call it for Code for Ref because it's a prerequisite, a prerequisite for Ref. So for people outside the UK, uh, if you don't know what Ref is, it's a very large uh, uh, exercise. It's an abbreviation for Research Excellence Framework, which is a system to assess quality of research in UK higher education institutions. And the next round was, was supposed to be in 2021, and it's now postponed due to the uh, current situation. And then institutions are submitting research outputs to REF for evaluation. And then most of institutions are submitting papers uh, because uh, they prefer to play safe. So in, th in theory, they could submit also code, but in reality, contributions uh, which are not papers are not so often. And then current research information systems are widespread tools which universities are using to underpin this process. And uh, therefore, uh, code is not often appearing in uh, this databases. And we think that the prerequisite to see more code submitted to REF is to see more code recorded in CRIS systems. And that's why we called our project code for REF. And then the talk is about this project. So let me scroll uh, down to see if there are any questions appearing there. Okay, thank you. So, of course, now uh, we all know that software is vital for research. And I think in our community, we uh, all uh, heard a lot about uh, the survey which was made by SSI in 2014. Uh, that 56% of academics develop their own software. Then here in St. Andrews, uh, Paddy ran a survey in 2016, which, uh, in, in which 41% of respondents said that they write, develop, or maintain programs or scripts and so on. And we can see that there are academics, PhD students, uh, postdocs, research assistants, and other categories of staff. So now we know that, yes, many people are doing that, but we are interested to find those people and how we can find them. So usually the situation is that you can find them using networking. So, but networking has two limitations. First of all, information which comes from those channels is not very structured. And then second, that it is hard to reach anyone. So there may be people sitting in some departments developing software and they will, uh, you will not reach them and never probably meet them and then be surprised after several years to learn that 
somebody in some other department actually developed a tool which you may be using for these purposes instead of developing it yourself. However, there are these information systems, right? And then those systems record everything about research publications. So you can easily find who in some other department is doing research in that area. And then also these systems, first of all, feed information into public uh, views on research portals of universities, so they can be accessible by outside world. And then also they could be consulted for appointments and promotions. So if you are developing software, in principle, this is your way to find possible connections with other people uh, and uh, facilitate your uh, career. And indeed, there is an anecdotal evidence in St. Andrews to support that. For example, when we, pub uh, when we circulated information about code for F in St. Andrews, I discovered a researcher from School of Economics who developed the software. And then I, th that resulted of him being invited to give a talk at the School of Computer Science as a seminar, because I'm a school organizer uh, in School of Computer Science of our seminars. And then, most surprisingly, it happened that actually his research was uh, uh, done in collaboration with one of our former PhD students in our school who left. And being in the same building, I didn't know about that. And it's only because of code for f I was able to learn about this project. So, uh, and then indeed, the majority of UK universities uses one or another CRIS because uh, everybody is obliged to make a submission for f. So our idea was, Let's use Chris to record information about research software. All right, but now this is a challenge because there is a large majority of different systems which are in use. There is a group which uh, performs a survey of systems which are in use each year. And here you can see that in 2018, for example, Pure, ePrints, and Elements were the most widespread element, uh, spread systems. On the other hand, uh, eight universities were developed, were using bespoke in-house uh, database, and 26 universities didn't uh, re reported that they do not use any CRIS. So perhaps their submission is just organized using uh, spreadsheets. Uh, so we don't have details about their use. So that's a challenge, of course, that some universities don't use any and some universities use not very common systems. Then also the second challenge is that in, in those systems, there is no obvious way to record software. There may be templates which are very hard to find. There may be templates which are too much oriented to uh, be too much paper oriented and they're not adaptable to record software there. So the, it's, it's hard to find attributes, uh, how, it's hard to find how to record attributes which you would usually expect from software. Then also some developers may not have access to Chris. For example, not every research technician in St. Andrews will have a pure profile or uh, PhD students by default do not have public profiles, so they need to log into Pure and then may make it public explicitly to enable that. So we decided that on this Hack Day project a year ago in Loughborough, we would like to establish a guidance and then create a website which is called codeforf.github.io in which this guidance will be collected. So at the moment, uh, we have instructions for three systems. So actually, we started with just two systems, Pure uh, from St. Andrews, uh, with instructions contributed by Paddy and me, and Luis helped with the instructions uh, from WorkTribe, this based on University of Nottingham installation. And then uh, last autumn, uh, we got instructions from uh, Symplectic, uh, 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 elements from Imperial uh, contributed by Dia Alonso Alvarez. So how these instructions look like? Basically a collection of screenshots and if you will would like to contribute to 
uh, code for app with instructions for another system. That's what we will ask you to do. Try to submit your software, try to prepare a collection of screenshots, and then put together a new page or, on pure code for app. So this is an example from Pure. You see that Pure has a type software. I can record publication status and I can record uh, title of this software contribution. Then I can record various meta information. For example, this is a package which is published on Zenodo using GitHub Zenodo integration. So in this case, we have a lot of meta information. So we record a particular tag on GitHub pointing to the given release. We record Zenodo DOI and then also the package website. And then the uh, public view of this record on the research portal will look like uh, approximately like this. So all this metadata about website, DOI, links to, uh, to GitHub tag and so on will be presented here. Uh, okay. So am I not going too fast? Is the pace normal? Okay, good. So uh, what next? Next, this is another example from research portal, Monte Carlo tissue ablation model from School of Physics. You can see here more or less the same uh, amount of metadata. So again, Zenodo DI, uh, link to GitHub, and so on. Uh, and then you can see more uh, outputs following this link. So currently, if you will open it, you will see that in St. Andrews, we have 113 uh, publications uh, here in uh, publicly available on the research uh, portal. Right, so now how other systems will look like. This is, for example, example for Navartis RIS. So you can add publication by DOI or you can add it manually. And then there is also a template for software here. You can also specify publication date and so on and so on. Version, uh, DOI, media online and so on. And then you can also specify things like research areas, teams, and so on. Uh, this is an example from symplectic elements. So also there is a type here, you can see on the right, there is a highlighted uh, menu choice, add a new software slash code. And then if you will be adding software code, then you can see here, mm, oh author's uh, title and abstract, and then some more software specific things on the right, like publication date, version license, uh, code repository, and so on. So there are some frequently asked questions here. So uh, the question one is, is this usable only for the source code which is indeed published on GitHub, this release is deposited on uh, Zenodo, or it works for any other uh, software. So, because indeed, if you will see that many examples were demonstrated in Zenodo. So the answer is no. And if, for example, you will go to St. Andrew's public portal, then you will see all different practices among those 113 publications which we have there now. So while in principle, we would recommend uh, developers of open source software to use it uh, on GitHub and then use GitHub Zenodo integration to assign a DOI to their software or maybe deposit it uh, elsewhere with the DOI, this is actually not a critical part. So the minimal information in principle which you need to provide is the title and the authors of the software. So uh, in principle, uh, this can be even a classified software which will never be uh, published. And you can still record your work on that software in your CRIS uh, system. So uh, second question, do you need to record 
each version of the software. Uh, I think this is recommended because in principle, you would like also to record somehow the amount of work, amount of your work time which you spend developing a software. And then you know that in principle, between two minor versions, there may be a huge amount of work to fix and debug uh, some, some problem and so on. So I would say, for example, for myself, I am tending to record every version of my software, but actually Pure has the functionality when you can specify which entries are private and which entries are public. So you can hide them from public view in the same way like you can do it, for example, for ORCID. But still, it is up to you as an author to decide which versions you would like to report. You can say, for example, my policy is I'm recording only minor, only major releases. I'm not reporting their minor releases. This is completely would be uh, up to uh, you. Yes, so I thanks, uh, I, I see the question. I will go to it uh, after the next one. So is it possible to import data from other sources? So Patricia Herterich uh, uh, explained uh, on uh, code for f that Pure can import data from ORCID if it is enabled. The thing is that it should be enabled by your institution. You cannot en enable that yourself. Right, so let me now read the question. So what if I only contributed to the code? How much should I have code myself in order to register it in a CRIS? Uh, I think uh, you should not have any obstacles of registering it in CRIS because uh, you can uh, register uh, software and insert the, into the author's field everybody who is the author of that software. So you can add the people from your institution and you can add the people outside your institution if there are those uh, things. Of course, in this case, probably it would be good to do that in some coordinated way. I think so you will uh, probably avoid duplications. But actually in Pura, this is easy to do because if, for example, my colleague from St. Andrews would add software which we call thread into Pura, it will also appear in my profile. So I will be uh, notified uh, about that. And then we, we had a very complicated um, actually case for that in the GAP system, because GAP is an international project which is coordinated by St. Andrews, and then it has many, many authors, and then we were uh, probably unable to add all uh, more than 40 uh, people contributing to it in different historical time, and then if we will look in our repository, then there are even more people coming after it. Uh, we, we migrated to GitHub, so we created several entities. So we created the local GAP center and we created an entity in Pure which is called the GAP group. So then when we need to list our authors and contributors, we list uh, local people, most uh, like central, most essential contributors from outside St. Andrews by name and then we, we put the rest into the GAP group like ETC. Right, so I hope that answered the question. Okay, good. So let's go next. Uh, how are we doing this time, 1726. Right, so then what are the benefits of that? So first of all, in uh, Pure, uh, there is an API and Paddy developed a Pure API demo. So we can extract information from Pure and publish a report. For example, here you see the diagram which displays the number of software entries into Pure by year of publication. And then of course, uh, this is only just the visible part of the iceberg as, as we uh, believe, because we know some people in St. Andrews from networking who developed software but did not yet recorded there. So how we can think this can take uh, off from that? So for example, this is the public research portal in St. Andrews. And then 
my plan is that we need to establish a critical mass of software outputs into in pure so the story uh, from my point of view buddy will correct me if i'm wrong uh, i think i heard that at some point research data was not a separate tile here so all data sets they were listed under uh, research publications but then the number of those data sets became too large and then uh, it was decided that they should be a separate tile there so i think that as soon as the number of software entries will become a, uh, will reach certain critical point we and other people in other universities can talk to their chris maintainers and suggest that uh, software should be more uh, visible on the public research portal view but sometimes this could be uh, not it, it may not be possible to do it by university on its own because there may be some requests which uh, should be addressed to pure or other Chris developers and then again i think here if sufficiently many universities will join that and then uh, we will uh, coordinate that then probably it will be easier to persuade uh, developers so the uh, like priority of this task will be higher and they could make certain changes then uh, how this fits into more global context so yes uh, uh, for example a product of another hack day or collaborations workshop two years ago was code the science manifesto which uh, states that code should be cited and acknowledged the scientific output and i think that uh, visibility of software uh, at research portals of universities is not only making research made in university more visible but it also helps individual software developers who are involved in uh, developing research software to get recognition and then also it facilitates the research software citation because in principle even if the software doesn't uh, suggest this uh, doesn't have a suggested citation format you can go to a research portal and then find a sample citations in different citation styles and then use it in your publications right so how i would like uh, to invite you to be involved so first of all if your institution uses one of these systems for which we already provide instructions then uh, you can check whether those instructions work for you because we made them based on specific installations in specific universities so it could happen that in other universities something will go differently then if there are any tips uh, corrections uh, extensions for example how to import data from other sources please consider contributing if your university is using another system please help us to collect those uh, instructions and then also there is a query on github in which we would like to collect information about uh, queries to public portals of other universities to see how uh, much of research software is recorded there so if i will click here let me show this link to you mm, right so this is this link and for example if you will go to university Sorry. Alex, we can, Alex, we can only see Keynote. We can't see your web browser. Like you've only shared Keynote. Ah, right. Okay. Uh, yes. So um, let me. Ah. Thanks, Paddy. Uh, let me go to the resources needed to take part, and then I will paste the link there. Right. Just above questions. So if you will open there, you can see collections of links to. Chris systems at other universities and then also help us to promote this in your institutions and let both developers and maintainers of Chris and your institutions to know about code for ref and then uh, you probably uh, heard most recently about the hidden ref 
uh, and then we hope that somehow uh, code for f can also help to this common goal of getting uh, recognition not only for research publications but for everything which is related to uh, software right so and then these are links uh, so i will also post them to the resources here and then i will be ready to take more questions so thank you very much questions comments Paddy, Luis, Diego, what did I miss? I'm not sure you missed anything uh, obvious that uh, comes to my mind, but people may have questions. Can't think of anything you missed either. Probably. There is one question in the in the notes document mm -hmm. which so it says um what if i only contributed to code and how ah. much should i have coded myself in order to register it ah, right. Chris? yeah i answered it when, when i seen it it was asked earlier ah, okay good yes so i can probably now show my Yes. Mm -hmm. um, could, could I ask a question? Can I be yes. first? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so I, I'm curious about uh, how this translates into papers, um, how institutions uh, are approaching, if at all, uh, this issue, namely <clears throat> how research software engineers uh, and other technical support coding for departments such as in psychology, etc. Um, how things may be changing regarding authorship of papers. Traditionally, in many institutes, many departments, these contributors research software engineers, uh, technical support, however they are called, were not included in the authorship of a paper, even though they contributed many and is an absolutely essential hours. Uh, mm -hmm. Is this changing at all? Or, or is, is, I guess, one thing to consider in this regard is that authorship of papers may not be very highly valued among um, software engineers right so i think good practice is to include software engineers as authors i think yeah absolutely yeah i guess so uh code for f um, could probably somehow compensate that so for example in the past you developed certain software for certain paper and it happened that uh, that develop a developer did was not included as an author but the software exists and lives their own life right so no obstacles to yeah. create now a record for that software right. and then also in principle because we are not specifying well good practice of course you know should be to have it published pro somewhere and then record the version get a doi and so on but on the other hand you can say this is a supplementary code for that paper and then record it there because then if a research software engineer works and then contributes to many things then somehow using the using uh, chris they will accumulate a portfolio of different tasks which they were completing yep. right mm -hmm. so that's uh, then in principle mm, so it's slightly slightly orthogonal task right but then it could it could help in yeah. general to make research software more visible and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah absolutely i i i just like to mention that um a portion i think a significant portion still falls through the cracks in this because 
uh, it doesn't live on because for for in some fields in psychology, for instance, but I suppose it may happen in other areas. For a particular experiment, the the code is created just for a particular project, really, for a particular mm -hmm. paper, and then it, it's mm -hmm. a very specific thing, and it's not a, something generalizable. It's not a program. It's um you know mm -hmm. it's something very very specific. So it it will not be used often. It will not just not be passed on. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, I I, I guess for for mm -hmm. the sake of these people who are greatly contributing to the research, it could make sense to yeah. kind of enforce it in mm -hmm. the policy to kind of, I don't know. I I just it just strikes me as fair, right? <laughs> if that... Well, I'm I'm just thinking that in principle, even if the code is specific code for one paper. It, it should be fine to say this is supplementary code for the paper and then provide in the metadata right, the link yeah, to yeah. that paper. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. if you will look, by the way, now at one of the um, articles here, which has less uh, things. Uh, so I will put a link into the chat in Zoom now. Then you can see that they have English publisher GitHub media of output online, so quite minimalistic description, but still, still it works. And I right. think it, this is exactly, from my yeah. knowledge, code. that's right. That's right. Quite re may I may a comment, please? Mm -hmm. uh, it, yeah, I'm. Well, I was a researcher before. I'm uh, for a while have been uh, already a researcher engineer, and definitely we all would like to be in papers, but that's a fight that the lab technicians have been fighting for a long time, mm -hmm. uh, whether they are uh, they should be in the papers or not, because if you think about it, yeah, software definitely is a key part of the research, but the people who who is uh, running the experiments or maintaining the equipment or analyzing the samples for you, uh, it's also a key for the for the results of the paper. Uh, depending on the institution, it may be the end user, the one using the machine, or it may be someone else uh, fabricating the samples or uh, or managing whatever fancy machine that we are talking about. So um, it's a tricky question. It's uh, if it is us, those who should be in the papers, uh, why not uh, lab technicians? Uh, what's the limit of what people should be included or not um so and yeah uh, it's it's uh, in the end you might end up with uh, 30 authors uh, <laughs> if you consider everyone uh, or a uh, or just three if you consider purely the researchers uh, but everyone else should be acknowledged somewhere um so it's not it's not uh, an easy answer and definitely it's not a fight just for research or engineers mm -hmm. uh, there's many other aspects of research that are not related to software that involve people that are not researchers and that traditionally have not been included as authors in papers yeah yeah, makes sense. yeah maybe one of the things is that in software you can have developers, authors, maintainers, contributors, and all different roles. And then usually if you publish a paper, then there is only one role, an author. I, I think it sometimes comes down to a question of legality. Like where you're talking about technicians coming in and doing work that contributes to a paper, if they are machining a part that is a, a novel idea of theirs, that no one else could have done, then yes, they should definitely be on the paper. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that, that that somewhat ties into how research software engineering could work as well, mm -hmm. is that if you design a web page to implement mm -hmm. someone's, someone's research, you're, you're mm -hmm. not really doing something particularly novel. What you're doing is implementing a web page. Whereas if you write custom software where you have to actually understand what they were looking for in the research, then yes, mm -hmm. you, you probably, merit going onto the paper and that's not to say you shouldn't have been recognized for writing the web page but you can write your name at the bottom of the web page and say i wrote this and you can mm -hmm. put that in your portfolio you can put it in your github but and then again it comes down to sensitivity if the piece of software you've written is sensitive and the researcher says no you can't put that on an open github because 
that's crucial to my research and someone could scoop me, then obviously you've done something that needs to be protected. Whereas if they're willing you to put it open in your GitHub, then you can do whatever you like with it. Um, I think that obviously that's very broad strokes, but that's always the sort of feeling I get to these things. And I, um, and the, the, the comparison with the technicians is one that comes up quite a lot in research software and engineering and can be quite sensitive because of the, the way technicians have been treated um, mm -hmm. and where we found ourselves coming almost sideways from being researchers and postdocs and PhD students, whereas the technicians might not have had that sideways transfer. They are often lower down in the pecking order. And, the fight over that is something they've been doing for a long time and we should be supportive of but necessarily tying ourselves to them could be dangerous for the movements and the career progression of those within it yeah and i i think the other the other thing that can help with it is uh, describing the, so the credit there's a credit project but there are, like it boils down to describing what is people's contribution to the particular is it a paper is it the software it's still like even if it's minimal contribution just by saying what is actual contribution it makes it much easier yeah so you can say like this person did, did data analysis this person did uh, something else and uh, i think that's where we have to go yeah. i think some journals do actually ask you to justify your position in the author list by saying what you did and that prevents people being on author list just because they happen to head up a research group and sat there just going i'm i, I own this research group therefore i own all of its publications um everyone has to have contributed something and it by by acknowledging and making that very clear and that would work quite well for for us and technicians i think we've just literally just submitted a paper which was um had a, a new implementation of stuff in in text gen in it and one of the things that we had to do was list what the contribution of each of the authors was and one of the one of the things was software development um so i went down as that and something else i can't remember what it was um but that was definitely a very specific thing in in the author, author attributions of that paper yeah, it's still the second challenge, the, the other challenge is how do we actually, uh, like where do we put the line in terms of uh, contribution to the software, yeah? So that's something that I think Alexander already mentioned here. Yeah? Like, is it, if you fix a typo in the documentation, are you contributing to the software? Are you the author of the software? Like where? Yeah. <laughs> where I normally ask people if they, if say to them, would you be able to publish this paper without my contribution? And if the answer is no, then, I want to be on there. I, yeah, I, I think that's a, a reasonable starting point. But then you, the, you end up saying is if you came in and just bug fixed at the last minute, then it, it comes down to a could have you again, not not saying anything. It's you, you, your works, you your work on you specifically. But if, if any software engineer could have come in and gone, oh, yeah, you've just done that a bit wrong, then that might not necessarily be as novel to get authorship but I think that comes quite interestingly with we, we end up in a unique situation using version control where everyone's contributions can be tracked via an address so if you're on the paper someone can then could, could who was really interested in seeing how much you contributed could go to the code and just filter by your sub, your updates um, and then it's just then it, it, it depoliticizes it because you could if you say I want to be on the paper you could almost go people can actually see what you did um and a it, it's then on you to put good commit messages to say oh i changed this to this and then even if you just changed a little bit if it was really significant it will be obvious by the commit message I see, I see one change here. So what if I wrote the tests uh, for the software? And of course you can do everything uh, uh, that you did without having those tests. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but that means that this contribution is not valuable or that, that wouldn't be uh, documentation. seen as document. No, yeah, yeah. Documentation, not for the paper probably because it's more about the reuse. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah. So that, that's still not. <laughs> The tests almost fall under the um, like calibration of equipment and whether that's uh, who did that is put in because sometimes that could be a, a well-trained lab tech or it could be down to the PhD student postdoc researcher um, to do. Mm, yeah, or you should you could think about it uh, like you can't do the experiment mm. without calibrating the instruments, so you shouldn't be writing software without having tests, otherwise you're doing a lousy job, yeah? Uh, so it, it, it's not the actual contribution to the like, quality of the, of, of, of the research, but it's contribution to the, pro, like, the quality of the software that you're using uh, versus like, the, the, the experiment and the instruments. Yeah? Alex is saying three minutes till the end of the session. So two minutes. Should, now. Yes. So we should probably wrap up. So what, uh, Alex? Could you let us re re remind us what's next? We are so moving I, to. I think we are just go. going. We are just going back to the main room to wrap up uh, day ah, one and and right. and get some instructions uh, mm -hmm. for for tomorrow. Ah. So we are finishing at six o'clock mm -hmm. today. All right. Okay, so it's a pleasure to see virtually here everyone. And I hope next year we can meet at Collaborations Workshop 2021, which will be in real life. And then get in touch in the meantime, if you would like to discuss more code for F things. So thank you very much, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank, Thank you. you. See you soon in the main, in the main session. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Thanks, Alex.